grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Dr. Brian Keith Hodges, Chair for the Department of Religious Studies here at Beulah University. And this is your devotional moment for the week. I'd like to lift up a passage out of the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verse number 4. It says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and though he is dead, he yet speaks. And so I would like to talk about determinations about God. Determinations about God. If you were to look at Hebrews 11 in its entirety, you would have an opportunity to engage with a number of people that for no other reason than their determinations about God lived lives of faith. The writer of Hebrews underscores five specific people. Abel, Abraham, Sarah, Enoch, and Noah. These five people, based on their determinations about the will of God, the word of God, the work of God, and the way of God, they determined to live for God. What is most interesting as you peer at this passage is that this passage speaks about a determination that is 100% heart, H-E-A-R-T, heart work. The context of Hebrews 11 chapter, chapter 11 verse 4 is chapter 4 of Genesis. It takes time and it takes place at a sacrifice, an evening sacrifice maybe, I don't know, but it takes place at a sacrifice. Cain brings the fruit of the ground and Abel brings the firstling of his flock according to scripture. God respects Abel's gifts but to Cain's gift he has no respect. Now there is a number of speculations about why God chose Abel's gift, valued it, venerated it, received it, and blessed it, and had no respect to Cain's gift. There are a number of things swirling around. It is not conclusive. I've read and I've read, here's what I've discovered, that whatever it was about Cain, whatever it was about Abel, was an issue of the heart, that our heart determines our actions. According to scripture, from the heart flows the issues of life. Abel's heart is determined to give God his absolute best. If you were to think about it, both of them had vocations. When I reread this story, my imagination begins to float around both of their experiences. Both of them had vocations. One is a farmer, the other is a shepherd or a cattle raiser or a cattle rancher. Both of them gave, got something, both of them grew something, and both of them gave something. Think about this for a minute. That God allows one to raise cattle and another to raise crop, and not one moment has God's hand not been invested and involved in their processes. Whether it's a cattle or a crop, it is God that makes it grow. It is God that sustains it. It is God that allows it to persist. If God is not involved, nothing would ever be produced. It is God who causes life to happen. Whether it is in the botanical sense or whether it is in the animal sense, it is God who causes the life to grow. What is interesting is this, that our perspective, an interesting word, in Latin, uh, perspicere is the word in Latin, and it really, it literally means to be seized by something, to see the world. God is at work in you. God is at work in the affairs. God is at work in the things that have uh, taken us, seized us, and those things that have challenged us. God is at work in the world. Not just that, there's another one. He is I'm not benevolent. He is good to all. And so he is just as good to Abel as he is to Cain. But Cain is not as good to him as Abel is. And therein lies the problem, friends. That if you're going to make a determination about God, it should start by saying, God, I want to be as faithful to you as you've been to me. God, I want to be as good to you as you have been to me. God, I want to be as consistent to you as you have been with me. It is in doing so 
that we make determinations about God. And when we make those determinations about God, they show up in our actions. I want to pray for you because while there's a thousand things going wrong in the world, God is still in control. And it is God who is in control that allows our lives to continue to move forward. We should not be here. We should not have what we have. We should not live like we live. And yet God is in control and he allows that to happen for us. Bad news about him. I've lost friends. My best friend in the whole world died on, we buried him on March 3rd. My sister passed away in November. My dad's last living relative passed away in May. Another dear friend of mine passed away in April. I've got reason to be balled up emotionally. And yet when I close my eyes and I thank my heavenly God, that God, my God, your God, reminds me I've got this thing all in control. And so I make a determination about God and I'm giving my best, follow after him as I can. I pray for you. Lord, speak into the deep rivers of our souls. Make life make sense so that we might choose you every time. Choose you first. Give you our best. Give you our best in everything and give you our best all the time. In Jesus' name. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Dr. Brian Keith Hodges, Chair for the Department of Religious Studies here at Blue Lights University. Every semester, we get an opportunity to come together to worship God, to sing praises to His name, to hear the Word of God proclaimed, and to fellowship. And during that awesome opportunity of spiritual growth and development, we have an opportunity to give. It is in giving that Blue Lights University extends the grace of God beyond the borders of our beautiful campus in the heart of Atlanta, Georgia. It is this opportunity that I would like to present to you. Solomon writes, the generous soul shall be made fat, and he who orders others shall himself be watered. The contemporary commentary on that verse is this, those who are great givers will also be great receivers. I wanna invite you to help us continue the missionary efforts we have, both domestically and foreign, as we show the love of Jesus Christ and extend his grace to others who are in need, others who are doing ministry, others who are in the ministry and marketplace that are carrying out the work of God, others who find themselves in a place where they have vision and a dream and they need the support. Please go to Beulah Heights University website. That's www.beulah.edu forward slash give. If you do that, it opens the doorway for us to give. Download our mobile app, use every platform we have. I want to invite you to be a giver so that we can carry out the mission of God. God bless you. Thank you for your support.